The sun was setting over Bella Riva by the time I reached Carmen's cafe. From the outside, it looked as quiet as ever, but inside, I found Carmen cleaning like her life depended on it. Maria! Oh, don't mind all of this. If Helena finds one speck of dust in here, I'll never hear the end of it! Carmen seemed pleased to see me, but I sensed the fidgeting tension beneath each sweep of her mop. Trying to live up to the standards of someone like Helena seemed like an impossible task. I hope you didn't mind fixing the camera for her. She was furious when it broke. I really need this to go well. If she doesn't lend me the money, I don't know how long I can keep this place going. Carmen led me to a back room, where she'd laid out the components of what looked like a neon sign. I had this made when I first opened the cafe, but ugh, I'm hopeless with electronics. So there was supposed to be a sign outside. This might explain the lack of customers. I'd like to put it up before Helena gets here. Can you give it a try? flashes, it'll really catch people's eye. Great idea. I think I have a spare part that could do that. something else. Maybe we can add one of these. It works! I'll screw everything together again and you'll be set. The sign fixed, we headed outside and mounted it carefully over the cafe door. Oh, that's perfect, Maria. It looks just how I imagined it. When I had this sign made, it all seemed so simple. Oh, I can't believe I might have to give it all up. I hope I've done enough. The smile froze on her face as she spotted something over my shoulder. I turned to see. Of 
course. My sister owns the only cafe in this entire town that isn't actually open. For better or worse, Helena had arrived. Carmen opened her mouth to explain, but Helena swept indifferently past her. Finally pausing in the doorway, she turned back towards Carmen. The first thing we're doing is getting rid of that hideous sign. And with that, she disappeared inside. I hoped Carmen's chances of saving the cafe hadn't disappeared with her. It was the day before the festival, and the whole town was busy getting ready. I had more work than I knew what to do with. When Joseph called with another job, I was craving the cool quiet of his and Izzy's seafront house. I'd barely reached their front door when I heard someone calling me. Psst. Maria, I need your help. Quickly! It's top secret! It was Izzy, peeking out from the side of the house. She beckoned for me to follow her. She led me through to a beautiful, unruly garden overflowing with flowers of every color. Nestled among them was a playhouse, its doorway almost completely obscured by a towering rose bush. You have to squeeze past it and breathe in real small, like this. Izzy took in a big gulp of air and crawled through the gap and into the playhouse. I hadn't planned on crawling in the dirt today, but the life of a repair woman never did run smooth. On the table inside, there was an electronic toy. Not exactly the usual stock in my parents' antique shop. I uh, had an accident. I didn't do it on purpose or anything, but uh, it won't turn on anymore. Can you fix it for me? play games as well? Can you show me how to play? I tried before but it was so hard.
her toy fixed, I watched Izzy retreat into its screen, taking refuge in a three-inch world of her own. Well, I'd better head inside. Your dad is waiting for me. Please don't tell him about the game. He'll think I broke it on purpose. Why would he think that? Because, uh, well, I kind of dropped it really hard at the wall. Izzy looked down, scuffing her shoes on the worn floor of the playhouse. My dad said I have to go to this stupid festival tomorrow and put on a stupid dress, and I don't want to. All he cares about is working. He never wants to see me unless it's for his job. I'm not going. He can't make me. With that, Izzy dove back through the rosebush and disappeared into the wilds of the garden. She was so young. She couldn't be expected to see that her dad was struggling, too. It made me think. Had I really tried hard enough to understand my parents' point of view? I was so focused on the adventures ahead of me, maybe I didn't care enough about leaving them behind. Leaving Izzy hiding in the garden, I walked around to the front of the house and rang the doorbell. It was only then I noticed my favorite overalls covered in grass stains. I scrubbed desperately, but it was too late. Maria, what are you doing? What happened to your clothes? I was uh, repairing a lawn mower. How unusual. Well, do come in. The job I've got for you is a little more delicate. Totally embarrassed, I walked into an orderly room filled with papers and ledgers. So this was his office. You must be so busy getting ready for the festival. Are you looking forward to it? Of course. It's traditional for the mayor to judge food from every cafe and restaurant in town. I'll be declaring the best chef in Bella Riva by this time tomorrow. Speaking of which... He unclipped the watch from his wrist and very carefully handed it to me. I'll have a tight schedule to follow, but my watch stopped working a while ago. Could you see if you can make it tick again? Are you sure it will all fit back together? The main plate has completely cracked. I'll need to replace it. The cogs look good, though. If I'm careful, I can reuse those.
I've not gone a day without this watch since my wife gave it to me. As I handed the watch back to Joseph, my fingers traced over the engraving on the back. I hoped fixing this was one small way I could help him move forward. I can't believe it's working, Maria. Thank you. My wife was a brilliant woman. Feeling this ticking on my wrist, it makes me feel like she's still here. Watches measure minutes and hours like they're infinite. I didn't know we had so little time. <laughs> Even with Isabel. I barely see her, and when I do, she acts like she hates me. Just then, the phone rang. Even when he was at home, his work was never done. Uh, sorry, Maria. I have to take this. I'll see you at the festival tomorrow. As I left, I turned and saw him pacing the floor of his office, his watch glinting in the afternoon sun. I hoped its quiet ticking would at least bring him some peace during the busy days to come. When my last job of the day brought me to Carmen's apartment, the door was opened by someone I didn't expect to see, Helena. Sorry for inflicting this mess on you. Carmen's never seen a knickknack she doesn't want to buy, apparently. Carmen's apartment was a little chaotic, but totally charming. It was easy to imagine her living in a place like this. It definitely wasn't Helena's style. She seemed more upmarket than flea market. I wondered why she was even here. We're having a clear out, or at least I am. Carmen's not helping, as usual. There's a market at the festival tomorrow. I'm selling some of these things to make her some money. She says she has nothing when there's all this stuff right under her nose. Helena stepped delicately past the items on the floor and reached down to pick up one from the pile. Look at this slide projector. Our parents treasured it, but Carmen treats it like a piece of junk. Can you take a look? Typical. Carmen's even managed to get a slide stuck in here. That light bulb is completely smashed. Okay, I'll need to redirect the light to the lens at the top for the projector to work. I was so excited when I moved to the city. Carmen, she looks so sad. Here's the clicker you'll need to attach. <laughs> God knows how Carmen broke that as well. Thank you. 
When we were younger, Carmen was always following me around. I suppose she looked up to me. A cool older sister. She used to ask me when I was coming home, but I was always too busy. I should make sure I screw everything back together. Helena was transfixed, staring at the two young sisters the projector had brought glaringly into focus. I... Oh, I never meant to let her down. Helena was trans... I... Oh, I never meant to let her down. But you haven't, have you? You came all this way just to help with the cafe. Plus the money. <sighs> That's the problem. There is no money. I lost my job a few months ago. My savings are almost gone. I have nothing. Carmen thinks I'll throw my checkbook at her bad decisions and make them okay. But I can't. Not this time. You know, the funny thing is, I came here wanting to tell her the truth. But she's so infuriating. How can I ask her for help when all she cares about is herself? Helena fell silent, shrinking under the gaze of her younger self, projected onto the wall. We drifted so far apart when I moved away. It felt like the only thing keeping us together was my bank balance. I know I have to tell her the truth. It isn't fair. But I already lost everything else. <sighs> what if I lose her too? 